Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is some of you and peace out to the rest of you. This is Black Horse Sign of Black and again asking you to hit that share button first before you hit like or subscribe because the message is more important than the messenger. I really don't care if I get um, four followers or four million. If they spread from what I'm saying, whether by word of mouth or by sending the links, that's good enough for me. I want the information to get out there. Red pill stuff. I've already said that Islam is a solution for the black community. I want that message to get out there. Even though people ain't going to agree, I still want them to hear it so they can judge for themselves. Um, and so that they know what to research and what not to research in order to find out how truthful I am. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and address the question. Uh, are the educated black men the reason that the community is in the crap that it's in? Well, let me start by saying that um, the way to answer that is the same way that you would answer the question, is the coach to blame for a team's loss? Or is a general to blame for uh, an army's loss in a war or in a battle? And in all honesty, the, the answer to that would be, well, did the people listen? Now, if those underneath followed uh, the orders of the coach, if the players followed the coach's orders and executed his strategies and used their discretion but not using their discretion to outright go against the coach, except in a surprise or emergency scenario, then you can put it on the coach. If an army loses after they have followed the orders of the general, then you can put that on the general. If, uh, if the educated men in the community share their knowledge and they're not well received, then there is absolutely no justification to put it on them. And we already know that when a man or a woman in our community gets education, but especially when a man gets education, there's no incentive to listen in the community. Now, when educated black communities like Cascade in Atlanta and like some of the Prince George County uh, black communities in Maryland, they're more likely to listen. But they're also in a little bit less of a bind than the rest of the community, a little bit. So we have to be honest with ourselves. How much are we willing to listen to somebody who sounds like they're not even black? And even I struggle with that. I'll listen to an educated person all day, but I'm not gonna listen to somebody tell me something with a little white boy intonation. I don't do that. Especially if you tell me something that's the opposite of what I wanna hear. You tell me to do something inconvenient and against myself, and you sound like a little white boy when you say, and I'm not gonna listen because I'm not gonna trust you. I'm gonna wonder why, what's the reason you said it? Was it for a legitimate, tactical, practical reason? Or is that your inner white boy talking? So I gotta work on this. You think the rest of us don't? I'm gonna call it what it is. We can't put this on educated black men in the community because we don't listen to them anyway. I'm an educated black man, formally or not, and I don't listen to everything everybody else uh, tells me. Now, if somebody's got an education but they still sound like a brother, I'm more likely to listen. And that's because I don't have to really doubt the motives until I see the person and have a reason to doubt the motive. But for the most part, no, no, no. Uh, I don't really have to doubt the motives. Not when it's a brother that's educated. And I've been educated, whether you wanna count education as informal and, and being self-taught or formal where somebody else prints up a sheet of paper with your name on it and it says, this is a degree from this institution of learning. By whichever definition, I'm educated. I'm not rich, but I'm educated. But when I share my expertise and when I share uh, knowledge specifically from my field, a lot of black folk don't listen. Doesn't matter. I mean, I used to teach history. I explain the history that's been recorded. And a lot of black folks don't want to hear it. I tell black folks, you can't sit up here and blame Islam for the slave trade of Africans. You can blame a few Arabs, but you have to blame those from whom they bought too. Because one of the, one of the biggest secrets is that Arabs could not go into tropical Africa and grab up a bunch of tropical black Africans and take them away against their will. 
This is one of the things that people don't realize. Now, later on, some Arabs did, did, be, did begin to raid some places in Eastern Africa. But when I tell people how rare this was, and what the Arabs are guilty of, and what they're not guilty of, I can't even finish a sentence. Why? Because you dumb niggas know everything and just interrupt everybody as soon as they say something is not what you wanted to hear. Forget the expertise, you don't let them finish. So no, we, we, don't get, we don't have the right to put this on the educated people. They wouldn't leave for no reason. Some of the, yeah, there's some inferiority complex. But for the most part, no. People didn't get, my, my parents' generation didn't get an education to move out of the hood because they just wanted to live next to white folks. My dad can't stand them. He didn't want to live next to them. He was a good neighbor to them as best he could be, but he feared them. And then he's not the only one. My mother grew up in the integrated North. She still wanted to live around black folk. But when she did live around nothing but us in the South, and she saw how ignorant a lot of us could be, she said, I can't. We can't live uh, just us together unless we can find a zip code in an area where it's only us who got some education. It ain't even got to be money, just education. That's what my mother said. We drove each other away. We drove the educated out. So we can't sit up here and say it's their fault the communities in the mess we're in. We drove out anybody who tried to share with us. There was a time it may not have happened, but no, we did it. We did do it. So it was both. There were those of us who just wanted to live next to Massa, and there were those of us who um, didn't want to but had to move out. This did happen. And there's one more thing I want to clear up while I can. Would you niggas, you ignorant ass, porch monkey, chitlin' grease dripping down your jaw niggas, stop blaming Don Calypso for coining the phrase educated lame. He used it after he heard somebody else. He actually got it from Sergeant Willie Pete. He didn't come up with this term. He's very educated. I mean, a man works in physics from my understanding. That is some difficult stuff. I mean, rail guns and coil guns, he knows everything about them. I don't know nothing about that. So why would he coin a term that could be used to insult him later on? For what reason would anybody do that? Does that sound like something that an educated man would do? To affix the, the term lame to it? Unless, of course, you're explaining how somebody else thinks. And which seems to be what Sergeant Willie Pete was doing anyway. But why would you, why, why do that? He's already clarified this multiple times and a bunch of you country ass niggas keep on blaming him for coming up with these terms like he did it and he did not. I hope this has been a benefit. Black Heart sign a blackout. Assalamu alaikum.